I took the Inclex on a Saturday about 11 o'clock. Um, I kind of moved my date up because there was some people in my class that took the Inclex and passed it. It was about two weeks after graduation. And I just sort of felt if I didn't know the material, then I'm not going to know it a month from now anyway. But I walked out about one o'clock and my wife drove me. But when I got in the car, she could see the look on my face. Out of about 75 questions, 31 was that dreaded select all that apply. How do I know? Because I kept tape marks. There were drugs, conditions I've never heard of. You know, there was no way I passed that exam. I was clinically depressed for about 48 hours, waiting on my results. I dodged phone calls, texts. I just wanted to be alone. I didn't want to talk to nobody. People was leaving me message, messages. How was it? How did I do? And I just, all I wanted to do was be alone and just curl up in the bed. Monday morning, I got those results, paid $8. I was so nervous, but I passed and I cried like a baby. Welcome to my podcast. Now I was a new grad nurse. I immediately felt the difference going from medic to registered nurse. I locked in my job three months before I graduated. I locked in a job um, with the new grad residency. So what a new grad residency is, is when you first finish nursing school, it's, it's a year long program where the hospital hires you and puts you through an event and enhanced orientation. Normally a nurse with experience, when you go to a unit, you probably would have maybe like a three shift orientation, or you may have like a, um, maybe a five week orientation. But as a new grad, you know, your orientation can be a whole year. And what it does is kind of cuts off your anxiety and uh, it teaches you sometimes, you know, have you may have to do a project or you may even just attend classes, but it's designed to retain you and to teach you without putting a lot of the traditional stress on you. I immediately felt the difference because as a paramedic, I'm used to testing facility. I'm used to the physical assessment test, SIMS, written exams, but for nursing, it was just an interview. I found it harder, though, to get the position I wanted in the new grad residency because of several factors. Number one, there's a nurse shortage, and it affects everything. Because there are less nurses, there are less nurse educators, meaning less seats. Less seats means less nurses graduate. Staff nurses were leaving in droves to travel because of the pandemic. ED and ICU travelers were earning big money. They were in big demand. It meant less preceptors to, to orient new nurses, meaning less new grad positions. So a unit may have three new grad slots for 40 applicants. But think about it. If a tech or CNA is graduating because they're in nursing school, they usually have first shots at those positions. So unless you really work on that unit, you're kind of out before you know it. So my first new grad uh, resident position, I'm sorry, my new grad residency was uh, in a step down unit on night shift. I lasted only two weeks. And after that, I just took a direct higher position in the ED. But I noticed in the ED, my medic experience was valuable. So let me explain. I spent seven years as a medic meant that I was comfortable assessing and recognizing when patients are, are, are crashing. On the step down units, most of the nurses only had an average of about three years experience. I was way ahead of them. In the ED, it was basically the same way. I was excellent at IVs, triages, 
triaging and assessing, I could do really fast EKGs. So the difference between the RN practice and the medic practice is that nursing is really task heavy. I'm going to expand this in, in a little bit more. So in the ED, I had four patients, but I had continuous orders. So I found myself running back and forth like all day. And it's either I'm doing triage assessments, I'm doing triage nursing assessments, I'm doing labs, IVs, the providers or standing orders, repeat labs. I'm getting ready for procedures, whether if it's a procedure to do a reduction or if it's a surgical procedure, CT or radiology. And I'm constantly rotating for patients. And the step down, it was a little different. In the step down unit, I had to do head to toe two shift assessments. I had to do a morning med pass, afternoon med pass, any med, meds or drips in between. You have to ambulate your patient, turn the patients that cannot every two hours. And also I had provider orders. And keep in mind, uh, my ratio was three patients to one, constant. As a medic, I only had one patient. And all I have to worry about is, you know, like my reassessment points, my initial, um, and really just treatment according to protocol. So I felt my load a lot heavier as a nurse than I did as a medic. It took me some time to get used to that pace. I thought I worked hard as a medic, but I actually worked three times harder as a nurse. But there are key, key differences as a new grad versus a medic. As a medic, um, there's more autonomy to think. You know, I can get the background, I can assess, I can treat, I can reassess, all focusing on one, one patient. As a new grad, you know, I only knew small details about the patient because only because I had three other patients I had to get to before I can even focus on him. So one, as a new grad, I have to learn how to triage my task. Which task is more important? Is it me asking about his medications or is it faster or should I worry about getting this IV in place so I can get his fluids because his blood pressure is tanking? So you have to learn how to triage your tasks. There, there are times when my patients had a room ready for admission, but I had to read the notes before I gave a report because I was so busy. And that's what life is as a new grad. So it's going to be a shocking transition period going from being a medic to a nurse. But if you stick it out and treat that as a learning experience, you'll get better and better and better. And today, three years now, uh, those tasks are really easy. Now I can finish a whole bunch of tasks and have room to kind of relax and eat and kind of unwind. I think my last tip I, I would like to give you guys is to get your first year experience in patient and in, meaning in, inside of a hospital. I'm gonna tell you why. If you go to an outside, what's called outpatient or to a clinic, and let's just say you do three years, then you try to go inpatient to a hospital, things, things are gonna be a little different because you may not know how to, to use the, the electronic healthcare system like Epic. You don't know how to use the pumps. You don't know how to use the PIXs to dispense medications. So you would need an orientation, almost like a new grad nurse. But the problem is that when you look at being paid as a nurse with three years experience, no one is going to pay you three years experience when they have to give you a longer orientation. So most of the time, they're just likely pass on you. Or if they do take you, they'll pay you a lot significantly less money than they would a normal nurse for three years. With that being said, un unless you had a unionized hospital, you will earn more money after your first year if you leave the system than if you stay. Here's what I mean by that. After your first year, a nurse with one year experience, now you, because you have that one year experience, you'll be a lot more valuable and the pay scale is like way higher. In your new grad period, they underpaid you. 
but as a now nurse with an experience now as an experienced nurse, now you won't be underpaid. But the problem is if you stay at that same hospital, you're only going to earn your yearly raise. That difference can be anywhere between five to ten dollars an hour if you stay at that system. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, guys, thanks for joining in on this podcast and I'll see you again. Take care.